Right, so the chicken's still cooking. Keep giving that a little turn around, make sure it's all cooking through. Um, I'm at the same time, you probably noticed from the early one, I'm just doing some chapatis, okay, homemade chapatis. Just cooking them, warming through. So, back to our history and classical lesson. Now, the, the classicist amongst you may well have read Posanius, I think it is, his description of Greece. In that, he, met, he mentions Silphium, which is the one that's related to the Ace of Petita that stinks like whatever. Um, and it's related to its aphrodisiac qualities. And he comments how the Donoscuri, which is Castor and Pollux, that's Castor and Pollux, if you know your classic uh, Roman history, um, apparently they went to the house of a Spartan. Now this Spartan had a maiden daughter. They are back then, maiden daughter, Mint virgin. Well, anyway, they asked to stay the night. The Spartan welcomed him into his home, let him stay the night. And in the morning, apparently, there was an image of a table. Apparently, there was an image of a table. There was an image upon that table of Casper and Pollux and there was some silpian part when the daughter wasn't a maiden anymore. Now, while we're talking of such things, when I was at school I learned Latin. Okay, and I learned about a poet, just I'm just tossing my chicken, just being careful I don't spatter the oil in there. Um, called Catullus. Now I always thought, I'm sure I was told, he lived in Pompeii at the time of the eruptions, but apparently he didn't, he lived in Rome. And I was also told that he was madly in love with a prostitute, well apparently he wasn't, he was madly in love with a married woman, and she was a bit of an aristocrat. Um, and he used to write poetry about her, some of which he used to send to her once he found out she was a widow because her husband had died, and so he was trying to like seduce her with his writings. Um, and one of his poems, he mentions Sylphium, right? Whether that was like a bit of a hint that, you know, come on then darling, let's get it on. He never did, right? The only bit of poetry I can ever remember that he, uh, we had to learn was Odi et Amo. Right? So that's the first one. It was Odi et Amo, Quari et Facium Fortesi Requiris, Nescio sed Fieri, Sentio et excrucio. Do I know what that means? It means I hate and I love. Why I do this? Perhaps you ask. I know not. But I feel it happening. And I am tortured. Okay. There's your history and your classical lesson. So we need to cook this uh, for a little bit longer yet. I'm just going to turn the patty one more time. I'm almost there now. 